Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Service Watercolor, and any time during this video you can click on the icon in the lower right hand corner and subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about my self-paced courses and my live online classes and workshops, you can click on the links at the end of the video. This is the narrated tutorial for my painting, Winter Cottage. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. I'm Rick Surwitz, and this is a demonstration for my painting, Winter Cottage. Currently, I have four windows open, uh, my artwork, the reference, my palette, and a camera on me. Now, for most of this demonstration, I'm going to have my camera off so that I can give you a larger view of my palette and the, uh, the reference. Um, but at the moment, I'm going to keep that open so I can just talk about a few things. So... My, my subject is uh, this winter cottage, and one of the things when you look at this subject um, is, you notice is the, uh, the kind of the dark background, the, the dark backdrop there, and it has some uh, very subtle uh, shifts in color uh, and a little bit of shift in value. Uh, there's some kind of warm tones, some cool tones back there. But there's not a lot of contrast in many of those areas. And there's a lot of kind of patterns and textures created. And then that contrast to what's going on with this very light uh, uh, snow-covered roof line on, on both of the, the, the components of the structure. And very clean lines. So I've decided that when I uh, do this painting, I want to keep... I'm going to put that back down. I want to keep these nice clean lines and these nice white shapes uh, on the roof line. And then you have this fence that goes across here. And sometimes I might decide I'm going to leave something like that out. But in this painting, I'm going to include it. And there's some snow on there, snow covered. And the trees are snow covered. And so what I've decided to do is I'm going to use a... Uh, frisket of, of clear tape to protect some of these areas while I apply a very uh, kind of a bold uh, textural wash in the areas back here so I can create these patterns of the trees and have a little bit of uh, broken edge where some of the sky is shining through perhaps and um, and at the same time, I'm going to protect these nice clean edges. I don't want these to be irregular. Uh, I want these to be nice, crisp, clean edges. And I want to protect that pure white. So I've gone ahead and I've applied a, uh, a frisket of clear tape over the areas that I want to protect, including this tree, this large tree. And the reason I have this large tree protected is because of some of the kind of the snow that's on here. When I paint that, I'm just going to paint that with a bit of a broken edge to, to give the suggestion of some snow on that. And <clears throat> by protecting those now, that's going to allow me to, to use a big brush and create some, some very uh, loose uh, washes over this area while I protect these. And I've, I've gone ahead and I've put my frisket down this, there's a bit of a technique to this. It takes a little bit of practice to work with uh, this. I basically cover my page with uh, two inch clear tape, overlapping layers, and I take a knife and I cut out around the shapes I want to protect and remove tape from the areas where I'm going to paint. And it takes a, a bit of time and a bit of patience, and I didn't include that in this video. Um, I'm going to start from where I begin to paint. Uh, so uh, that's going to be my approach. And with that, I'm ready to go ahead and get started with the painting. All right, we're ready to get painting here. And I'm going to go ahead and mix some colors here that I can use. And uh, let's go ahead and I'll blow this palette up so we can get a good look as I mix uh, my colors. I'm going to be using a one inch brush here to start. I'm going to take a little sap green. Put some of that down. So I like to make big pools of color. I'm going to use uh, some raw sienna. I'm 
I want these mixtures to be fairly rich in pigment. These aren't, for the most part, aren't going to be thin washes, although there's an area where I'm going to do a little bit of a gradated wash. I'll take a little quinacrid and burnt orange. Mixing that. A little royal blue. I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue. A little burnt sienna. And I'm just going to mix a variety of kind of earthy tones here. Some warm, some cool. I like the ultramarine with the burnt sienna, that's going to give me, uh, if I want, it could give me some neutral grays, but I'm going to keep them uh, a little, a little bit away from the neutral range. So I've got a pretty good mix of paint. And I'm going to start actually with a, uh, an area here that I'm going to, there's, there's, a, there's a tree here that that's really doesn't have much on it. I'm going to keep that as a kind of a thin wash. <clears throat> some clear water break that up a little bit I'm gonna bring that wash down you can see the areas and I want some broken edge so I'm gonna kind of hit that quick I want a little bit of the white of the paper still to show through and I just want to create a bit of a soft edge there but um, almost immediately I'm going to start to go to some some darker uh, paint. But you can start. To, you can see where my uh, the areas I've masked, and I'm going to go ahead and put this palette back down so you can see what I'm doing here. So let me get that back in position, and now. I want some broken edges here because I have a little bit of the uh, the sky showing through. So just a, a suggestion of some of that. I'm just dragging the belly of the brush to create that. And I'm going to stay fairly cool here to start. Then I'm going to start working in some warmer mixtures. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of a warmer mixture here. We have a tree going up. And because I've taken the time to do this uh, mask, I can, I can be very uh, loose, use this big brush, not have to worry about losing my, the, the edges here. And I'm going to switch back to warm because it's, it's, uh, those edges are all protected by the wash I'm putting down. Actually, I'm going to start to get into a, kind of a snowy area here. So I want to maintain some of that as a light tone. And uh, now, I'm going to get a little darker mixture. I'm going to add some green to that, just a little. So you can see how much darker that is.
get just a little of a, just a slight tint of blue in this. All right, so there's there's risks of backwashing here, but the way I painted this, that's fine. It doesn't bother me with what I'm trying to do. So now what I'm actually going to do, I'll get rid of some of that. I want to get some uh, a warm mixture going here. I'm going to take some raw sienna, and some quinacridone burnt orange. And I'm going to start to paint some of these these tree trunks that are back here. And it's going to start to push some of that paint away where I where I make these marks and create somewhat of a backwash. But I I'm, I want to do that on purpose. There's a tree here, tree here. Now I got a little darker, cooler thing going on here. So I'm gonna, while this is still has some moisture in it, I'm gonna gonna bring in some of these darker trees. And I'm gonna paint around some of that eventually. Right now I'm trying to drop some of these warmer tones in. There's some branches. A lot of branches. And I can just, I can make these continuous strokes because of the way that I've, I've masked this off with the paper. Going to create a pattern back here of all these branches. So it's a combination of the of the paint that I'm using actually, and a, a bit of a backwash action that I'm I'm using intentionally to create this tangle. of uh, branches. I think I'll just go ahead and suggest there's a tree here. I'm using this quill brush which holds quite a bit of paint but it, it creates a, it has a, a very nice tip on it. get some of this darker tone. It's best if you can paint some of this in while the branches along with the tree trunks while they're the same uh, moisture content and they then you don't it doesn't look like you stuck a branch on it it just melts right into the tree trunk. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some some darker uh, linear marks here just to, to look like some tree trunks back there farther in. I want to make it look like there's some some things hanging. I'm going to do a little bit of, right now I'm working on damp and eventually I'm going to do some uh, wet on dry back here to crisp up a few of these edges. Although it's, it's doing a pretty good job right now. Want some branches covering some of that. And I'm going to bring a few more 
branches of a darker mixture in. A little sapling there. A tree going up through there. So after I did the initial application there with a one inch flat brush, most of what I've been doing has been with this uh, quill brush. So I want to get a little bit more action going here. Sure, I like that tree just catching that corner. Bit of a tangent there that I don't like. I'm going to lighten that up and maybe regroup here. So, got an area here that I kind of missed that I want to up the background a little darker so that gives me a good start for what's going on in the background here and I can come in working wet on dry a little bit to fine-tune things got a lot of branches going around and it's very low contrast but there's there's definitely switches in, in, in contrast of warm and cool and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry this. One of the things you want to be careful of, especially if you're if you're using some some of this tape like this to mask, is uh, you know take the time to clean off these beads of water that build around. Because if you do use a hair dryer to dry like I do, they'll blow around and get in areas that you don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this, and then we'll go from there. All right. So I've dried the, the painting and I've removed some of the frisket that I had plied down. I've left the frisket protecting the tops of the roof and I've left the frisket over the fence and this area here in the, the foreground, most of that. I've removed it from the tree in the sides of the building. And one of the things about using this and painting around as I did, here I want these nice clean edges. I don't want this tree to feel like it was pasted on. So I'm going to take uh, a brush here. i just take my quill brush to start. But uh, I just want to soften. I'm going to take some clear water. And I'm just going to gently soften these edges and let a little of this uh, color kind of migrate on to the, to the white of the paper. So just soften these edges so it doesn't feel so much like this tree was just pasted on uh, because of the, the hard edges I got with the frisket. So just clear water. I could use a, a sponge. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna clear out a little too much, I think, of the background if I do that. Um, and I can always come back in and, and paint a little darker in that background. But I just want to lose some of the harshness of the edge created by the by the tape. And. You know, I could use a scrubber brush, but it might get a little too much off the area around the tree where I'm trying to preserve some of it. So that's going to soften things up a little bit. And let me give a quick dry. I'm going to work on painting this tree. All right. So I, I've dried this where I, where I got damp from softening those edges, and I've softened the edges. And I'm going to mix some colors here on uh, 
on my uh, palette, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. I'm going to use some uh, burnt sienna. Mix those up a little bit. Add a little burnt orange. It's, it's a livelier color than the, the burnt sienna. I'm going to take some raw sienna. And let's see, a little royal blue. Really the same colors I was using in the woods, this whole background area, except that there's no, I didn't add any uh, sap green to this mixture. And I'll just work with this till I get really what I'm after. So this is gonna kind of give me what I'm after right there. And so I'm gonna start this is going to be, I'm going to play this light source up a little bit. It doesn't really have a strong light source in my reference photo. So I'm going to have my, my light source coming in from the left. And uh, so I'm going to have more shadow on this side. It's going to be cooler, but uh, I have some, some snow uh, kind of uh, just hanging on to this tree. And I want to show that with a little bit of a broken edge. So I'm just going to drag the belly of the brush up with uh, a little bit where I don't want. More of a cool mixture. Just dragging it to get that suggestion of some snow clinging on. Throw that down here. So my brush isn't fully loaded. It's it's a low moisture, what I call a low moisture brush. It's not dry, but it doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. And I'm gonna indicate a little of that texture there. And some in these these branches. some of that texture and uh, you know create a little on the side uh, now I'm just gonna come in I'm gonna paint let's see we're gonna go a little warmer on this side So. A bit richer color so here we come with this and I remember I have this this fence post uh, still masked
probably gives me enough I can work with right there. And I'm going to take a number six liner brush that I have while wow, this is still wet. Get some branches coming off these. This branch is coming down and eventually once I take this off I'm gonna bring that branch down and, and over the roof a little bit to kind of create some overlap Start to indicate a little bit on these uh, some of the area here in the woods beyond that. This big tree just has some things going around in here now that I'm working wet on dry. I'm going to drop a tree in here. Oops. Maybe a starter here. Bring it down to there. So now I'll have the, the suggestion of overlap because of this area where I've protected the uh, fence that shape so it'll remain light. Take a few uh, uh, touches with some of the cooler paint around the, the edges of some of those marks I made earlier. Work more in negative space around those shapes. So now I want to dry this and I'm going to begin working on the building itself. All right, now I've dried this whole area here and I'm going to start to work on here. Now re remember the roof line and some of these, uh, the, the, the white tops here uh, are protected with uh, the, the frisket and so is this fence. And as I said, I'm going to have the light source coming from this, this direction. And if you look at this building, it has all the, these stones and some, some block that it's built with. And I'm going to put down a, a, just kind of a base wash 
on the on the building on this structure here that's the stone and in the, the block to to go ahead and get that kind of an under uh, an under painting going here with some different colors and then I'll then I'll come back and I'll I'll give the suggestion of some of those stones and, and blocks that are that make up this this building um, but I'm not going to paint every stone and block that I see. I'm going to give a, a suggestion. So this wash, this initial wash, is going to uh, be a combination of some warm and cool uh, colors. So I'm going to take some raw sienna, and I'm going to take a little royal blue. I'll be using really the same colors that I've been using in the trees in the background uh, for the most part. And as I, as, uh, as I did in, in this area here, I'm not going to have any uh, of the green, per se, but um, just, a, just, a, a, just an indication of warm and cool. So I'm going to start to put this wash on. And... A little warm and now I'm going to add a little cool and uh, this is a fairly light value that I'm putting down I'm going to add a little bit more of the warm back in there I got a little off track with that And right now, it doesn't bother me that I've got a corner I'm turning. I'm going to come back later and add a little more value to that, to the shadow side. So I'm just going to bring this down. Bring this around to the other side. I want to make sure I keep a wet leading edge here. I don't want to. I don't want to start getting any uh, backwashes or edge edges setting on that. And this is gonna come back. Oh, I didn't want that. Put my brush in the wrong color here. Raw sienna. Paint around that shape because that's going to be kind of a gray galvanized look. Really going to be, end up being a red brick tone. But I think I'm going to paint underneath, paint this underlying wash anyhow. I got to make sure this edge doesn't set over here. I'm going to stop here with this building. this edge so now I have a nice wash down on that and I want some of this gray here I'll pick it up there this just some stone blocks on the edge it's an interesting roof line a challenging roof line I think 
Now I'm going to paint the bottom half of this. Actually, we'll paint the. Let's see, we'll paint the whole shape, and I'll come back with a cooler glaze on the bottom half. That. So if I started to lay in just a base wash on this building and I'm going to come back and go a little darker once I turn that corner with another glaze. So uh, I'm going to also, I'm going to paint, uh, I think I've got a, uh, you know, I need to actually move over a little farther on this. Make sure I capture the edge of the building. There's a post there that I'll be painting. All right, that's pretty good. Um, probably the best thing here now is to let is to dry this because I want to paint here. But if I start to to paint right adjacent to this, I'm gonna. It's going to mingle, I'm going to lose my edge, and I'll probably get some backwash. So the best thing for me to do right now is to uh, stop and dry this. All right. Uh, one of the things I did that I didn't want to do, I was moving this wash around here. I really should have cut around this. I wanted to have a lighter shape in this window where those curtains are. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, some tape. This happens to be drafting tape and I'm going to uh, just put that tape around that shape so I've taped that area off and now I'm going to take you can take a sponge I'm taking on one of these magic erasers and I'm just going to gently rub the area that I've taped off, blot it with a tissue, and uh, remove my tape. And now I have my light shape back that I want for the uh, for the curtains. Um, so that's a way. It's not pure white, but it, it does a pretty good job getting back where I where I want it to be. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wash over uh, this this uh, extension of the the second kind of component of this structure. This is an older stone. Uh, you know, st structure here made of stone and block, and this looks like it was an extension that was added on at some point. Uh, I'm going to keep this fairly cool. And I'm going to paint uh, this kind of a cool wash underneath where... Uh, the shadow is being cast. I'm going to bring that down. Now leave that lighter here. I want to. I want to pick up that. Lights coming in from this source is hitting here and it's, it's casting a, a shadow down, but there's still some underneath this under overhang. And now I'm going to come around the corner and I'm going to go um, with a little bit more, but I still want it to feel like it's a, a, a white building here. But I want enough. I want enough of a, a value here, a light value to, to, to make it feel like it's a shadowed side of the building. And I want this 
carry down. I've let the snow dip down a little below this fence. It's a little odd composition for me just because I wouldn't normally put a fence straight across like this, but I think it's a, an interesting subject, so I decided to go ahead and go with that, that look. And uh, there's kind of a gray flashing here. I'm going to pick that up with that. And uh, I wanted to get the bottom of this chimney. It has a bit of a gray that wraps around it there. All right, so I think we're ready to dry that, this wash here. Now, I want to cast um, a bit of a, a shadow on this side here without losing a lot of what I have. So I want to I'm going to take a uh, just a, a, a round brush. Bring this down. I'm gonna uh, use some water just to soften that as it moves away. I just want enough to indicate an edge edge there because there's a lot of light bouncing around so even though this is a shadowed side um, it's not going to be that dark just because there's a lot of light bouncing around you have this white roof with the light reflecting off it um, but I wanted enough there to show that that's an edge and let's see here I think what we'll do is we're going to be drying some things. Let me get a little uh, just the paint mixed here. And I'm going to come in. We've got a doorway here. We've got a post. And we have a, a very dark uh, doorway. So I'm going to give it indication now and actually right on the leading edge of this roof line there's, there's some dark edges and I'm going to bring that right down into this this doorway starts to get a little lost some unusual things that happen with the with a fence like it is and it creates a few tangents in areas where I might uh, normally try and avoid but um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and stay with the with this fence coming across it because it's that's really what's going on and I need to be careful here because I, I brought that clear wash over here and I'm going to get the, some, some running of the paint where I really don't want it. Dark edge up there. A little darker edge there. We got some snow on the rooftop or on the top of that chimney. So a little gray. doorway it has some windows and I think I'll dry this all right everything's dry on here now I'm going to start to paint in just some indication of the uh, the, the the blocks and some of the stones here. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I'm going to give an indication of those. And 
It's almost kind of like a reddish block. I'm just using the colors that uh, I have here on my palette. This, this kind of mixture of some neutrals and uh, I'm going to use my quill brush and I'm just going to drag this. Let's see, actually, I've got an area here. With the, this line of stone going across here is a little, uh, a little darker. This line, and there's a little bit of that tone here, a little bit there. And actually, this here has some of that same. Kind of a neutral, almost a warm neutral. Maybe I'll just touch it with a little darker line. A little bit here. Get some of this reddish tone. And uh, Let's see, this seems to be a little, a little darker pattern. That stone. And I have these two little dark kind of voids here in the black. A little line there. A little line under there. All right, now I'm just looking for kind of a, a, a grayish tone. I'm using this quill brush and I'm using it at an angle. I'm just going to drag it sideways just to, to give the indication of some blocks. I'm gonna just block those. I don't want this just to become a something that looks like I just stamped stamped it with all kinds of little little block shapes. I'm going to give an indication of these blocks, but I'm not going to overtake the whole painting. I'm just going to suggest give enough information to suggest that this is constructed of of blocks, but perhaps some of the reflection of the light washes it out. It's, I don't need to paint every block and stone in the, the building. So I'm going to give an indication that those are going, that there's rows of these and that they're going down. But again, I'm not going to paint the whole thing. I'm going to let some of this kind of wash out intentionally. And uh, let's see how this goes. I want to catch the edge of a few of these uh, elements, these pieces of the of the fence, just to show some overlap with the blocks. I'm going to take some of the warmer colors too. And add to this. Oops, that's a little too wide. I don't want to get too bright with this, but I want to I want to indicate that there's some some warmer colors here. Just enough there to show that we've got the some stone making that up. And now I'm going to go in with a uh, 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 kind of a middle value. I want the, this to be a little warmer. And I'm going to paint the kind of the inside edge of this window, and then I'll paint the kind of a, a darker element 
actually just a touch that it kind of fills the window space there. So I've got the frame, and the sill, wherever this is going in. A little more for down here. Just want to do enough to indicate there is an edge on the window. And then uh, I take a little of this cooler mixture. to indicate a little darker area, a little cooler area as you get go into where the window is at. Just a suggestion there. Now I've got this, uh, I want to get this a little, get a little better definition on here. I was doing it before when it was a little too wet. some light pieces going across here. I'm just going to blot that to soften that a little bit. A little darker in there. Right now, I'm going to take Uh, a bit of a a brick like color. Let's see what we get here. And I'm going to do a little bit with this chimney. So I'm just going to drag my brush. side the same block that I just want that to be subtle and I want to go uh, up here just a little bit more on this I want to go a little darker too much. Right. I'm going to put a bit of a just a little color in here, not too much. Just to give it the look of some curtains, perhaps. And, uh, you know, this. We have uh, some poles that are coming down here. So I'm going to add a little bit of a warm tone. I guess I'll go to the width of these poles. This is what's uh, supporting this uh, overhang. So now I have those poles there. All right, right along this edge, 
we have a uh, kind of a middle value tone for what's going on on this edge underneath the roof line. Might be a little, a little too dark. Not too bad actually. It's pretty close. And I'll drag my brush sideways. I like to interrupt lines like this. I don't like to paint them solid. I just think it's more interesting to paint them that way. So I do. Got a little bit of an edge there. Now I want to give some indication of some of these block, these stones that are on the side here. And I want to do enough that it starts to show that there's this is made up of that, but I don't want to get to the point where I'm painting every one of these. Now across the top there's actually some blocks so I'll indicate those then we get into these stones a little raw sienna here there's some kind of yellow yellow stones here and there and these aren't all the same size. These are small, they're large, you know, there's some large rocks, there's some small, there's some short, there's some long. So the trick here is going to be how to suggest all that stone here without having to paint every little stone and try and render this out because that's not, this painting isn't a rendering of, of a wall. But it's important. It's really strong. I want to pick up some of these patterns going in between the, the fence. And I want to try and get a few of these where they look compressed, where they're, they're kind of tight because they are. There's some, there's some thin rocks and there's some thicker ones and they stack, you know, very irregularly in this fence or in this, this wall. There's a little bit of line in here. I'll try and show some of that. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot more here because it's just going to get out of control. There's a little bit of a, some brick that's showing. Alright, next, next I'm going to dry this and uh, 
Then I'm going to do a little bit more calligraphy on this. All right, my next step is actually going to be um, one of the things I neglected here while I was doing these blocks is that uh, this whole end is, is made up of blocks. So I want to indicate some of the blocks up here. A little cooler color. blocks actually go all the way uh, up this chimney That's probably enough there. Alright, okay, so now I'm just gonna work with some of the, the colors I have here, add a few touches of some color and uh, let's see, I'm gonna get some cool. I'm gonna indicate kind of the edge of the roof line there. Leave kind of some shingles here. Bring a little bit of that here. I like to use line to describe different edges and intersections. I think sometimes that gets it's a design element that we overlook. bit of a gutter here. I guess I'm going to go ahead and put that on. So I'm going to sh show that gutter coming down. I'm going to soften it because I don't want it to be such a strong element. At the door, I don't really need to do much there. So I think I'm probably at the point where I'm going to uh, perhaps remove um, the rest of this uh, frisket and then I'm going to start to paint some along this fence line. I want to show the snow but I want to show kind of the bottom edge is wood. Okay. My, my paint, my uh, painting is dry, and now I'm going to start to um, paint some of these areas on the fence. All the masking has been removed from the entire painting.
So now I'm going to go ahead and, and start to do some final touches on this. So I'm going to work with some of these colors I have on my palette. And I'm going to give just a... I don't want to overpaint the fence. I kind of like the... Uh, the, a lot of the white going into the snow here and um, so I'm going to try and paint as little as really as little as possible but still give an indication about the, the fence being here and the fence post and this fence post kind of has some snow that's uh, build up on the, the edge of, of the slats that are coming across. So I'm trying to show that. Just paint this and leave just a little indication of some build up snow. And you see part of the fence post, but not all. And I don't want these all to look the same. In terms of the shape that I'm painting there, and I see the fence posts underneath uh, contrasting against the snow. Kind of indicated these fence posts, and I'm going with a real dark value. I've kept it pretty light, but I think add just a, a little, a little more here in a couple areas. Now, I want to give some indication that we have boards going across that are snow covered, and I want to keep them mostly snow covered. Because I like that light tone. my brush in some areas. I want, a, I want enough there that you can tell that there's some, that this is a fence. go heavier with that down here let's just see so this is showing actually a little bit more of the fence in a few of these areas down here at the bottom didn't get as much snow build up on it
Probably don't need to do a lot more with that. I think I'm going to dry this. Before I do, I'm going to take uh, one of the things I wanted to do is I want to go back get a color here that I like and I wanted just to give a little bit of an indication of this branch coming down and hanging over the rooftop Heat some of that up here with a little darker line. That just gives a, 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 a layer here of overlap that helps build maybe a little depth into the painting. And let's go ahead and dry it now. All right, so this is dry. And I've been undecided on what I want to do with this. I'm going to leave it white or I'm going to put a little tone on it. I think I'm just going to. Uh, put a light wash over this. Just some of this mixture I have on here with the royal blues and uh, sienna. So I'm going to put just a little bit of a wash there. But I want to keep some of this more white of the snow. Maybe just a little darker, just to help make this feel a little closer to us and a little bit more foreground. So I'm gonna get that there. So that's probably enough. Get rid of these. And then once again, let me dry this and I think we'll be there. All right, I thoroughly dried this, and now put a mat on this, get a good look at it. And I think that's about where I'll leave it. So there you have uh, my painting, Winter Cottage. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.